which is quickest in a drag race, an Audi R8 Performance Spider or an RS6 Performance? Well, we're gonna find out because I'm gonna race them over a standing quarter mile because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Now, let me tell you about this R8. It has a 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10 engine that puts out 620 horsepower and 580 newton meters of torque. It drives all four wheels via a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox with launch control. This car weighs in at just under 1.7 tons and it costs from 160,000 pounds. Now, to find out about the RS6 performance, let's speak to its driver. Hello, Nicholas. Hey, you are not Nicholas. Anyway, tell me about your car, Nick. Not sure why we're talking about whether I'm going commando or not, but uh, never mind. Let's move on. My car has a four liter twin turbo V8 with 630 horsepower and 850 newton meters of torque. And both of those numbers are a lot bigger than the numbers from your car. Mine also has Quattro all wheel drive, but a very different gearbox, an eight speed torque converter. It weighs 2.1 tons. It is a bit cheaper though, 113,000 pounds. So uh, kind of swings and roundabouts on the stats really. You got 10 more horsepower a bunch more weight this looks way cooler not quite so practical <laughs> i would say quite it's like <laughs> so much less practical really it's quite an impractical car this and yours is very practical but we're not here for practicality we're not trying to carry things in boots or anything like that we're just going to boot them to see which is quickest and i'm going to back this r8 and i'm certainly going to back it for the first test that we're going to do let's get on with the car wow sound check so i'm going to rev up my v10 <laughs> And you're thinking, oh, crappy soft limiter. And you're right. But if I go to drive, pull up both pedals, I'm now in neutral and. Wait, wait. No, that didn't work. Other trick. Let's go into launch mode. Let's do that. There we go. Actually, I think I might be able to do the trick when I'm moving. So if I drive along a bit, then go into neutral. No, why is it not doing that? Oh, that's a shame. And Nick's probably wondering what the heck I'm doing. Where's he going? We haven't started the race yet. I'm just going to reverse up and pretend nothing happened. Nothing happened at all. Let's have a listen to your car, Nick. Don't ask why I just moved forwards and then crept back, okay? Okay, but uh, first, before we do this car, I just want to say that your car is a supercar. It does not sound like a supercar. So I think we should judge my engine on it being a practical family estate and see how good it sounds for one of them. Sounds like it may as well be a two litre diesel, mate, to tell you the truth. Right, yeah, look, 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 look at this, look at this. That sounds like a supercar, right? That does. More so than you're sounding like anything other than just like some horrendous commuter wagon. Your car is actually louder through my walkie-talkie than it is through the air between us. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Yeah, it is because the induction noise on this car is to die for. You just hear the engine, it's right behind your ears and it just sounds so good, the induction noise. Exhaust, yeah, but induction, yeah. I'll give you that. Nothing beats an NA engine, does it, when it comes to induction noise? No and you're not going to beat it in this drag race, which we're going to get on with now. Before we do though, if you haven't done so already, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss our next upload. Three, two, one. See ya. <laughs> come on wagon, come on. Neck and neck launch, but Woo That was a neck and neck launch, I think, Nick. Your car basically like rears up like a power boat getting on the plane out of the water. Yeah, can't do anything against this, can it? No, that's right. I feel like I'm wearing the wrong hat. I should have a captain's hat in this car. HMS RS6. But I think I can do a better launch as well because this builds boost for ages before you launch it. And it only just flashed up with launch control ready a split second before we went. And I reckon a few more PSI, build a little bit more boost and I'll get a better launch. Okay, that's fine talk. 
You're gonna need to build a lot more boost to be able to beat this, but maybe you can get closer, or maybe I'll fluff the launch. Who knows? Let's find out. Three, two, one. Oh no! Oh, that was a better launch that time! He did me! Come at me, Matt. Come on! Well, that, that was better. It was definitely better. This wins, right? However, my launch wasn't great. I'd like to do one more time so we can just get a perfect launch with both of them so we can compare the times. I bet you're a little bit worried halfway through that quarter mile, weren't you, Matt? This thing went off like I've never felt an RS6 go before. This new performance model is wicked. I'm just gonna drive away from him. Don't want to hear what he has to say. Three, two, one. <laughs> Pretty good for me. Oh, yes. Yes, come on. <sighs> Done it again. Listen, Nick, I think we both need to give ourselves a little pat on the back for doing perfect launches there. Both of us just totally in sync. Brilliant, brilliant work by you. Really, really liked your work there. What do you think of mine? Exceptional, Matt. Yeah, synchronized Audi magic. It is amazing how we can both take our left foot and move it up a bit at exactly the same time. People don't really appreciate just how difficult it is to do that and to keep your arms like that, just, just straight without moving them. They don't really get it. And to keep that position for just over 400 meters really does take a special kind of person. Anyway. Next to the thing. So then what exactly happened? Well, the R8 won, completing the standing quarter mile in 10.9 seconds. The RS6 took 11.2 seconds. Now we're going to have a rolling race from 50 miles an hour. The car's in automatic mode and comfort setting. First of the half mile wins. Three, two, one, go. Come on, torque converter. What a kick down. And it's not enough. Now your car actually jumped ahead of me at first. And what my problem was, just as I was about to say go, my car just changed up a gear. <laughs> so it was just changing up. Then it's like being asked, suddenly changed down. And it kind of dropped the ball a bit. How about your car? I wondered if that might have happened because it looked like you went backwards before mine had finished shifting down. I mean, no complaints here at all. This torque converter, great at launching and pretty good on the downshift too. Actually, it's not that good on the downshift compared to the competitor cars. And if you want to see exactly why I'm saying that, click on the pop-out banner up there, follow the link in the description below to watch a drag race between that very car and a BMW M5 competition and Mercedes MG E63 S. Anyway, let's take the gearbox shenanigans out of the equation. Let's do another rolling race. Now we're going to race over the half mile, this time in sporty setting and manual mode. So there we go. Three, two, one, go. Oh my God. My goodness, I'm ahead. But how long is it going to last? My distinct lack of torque was a problem, but now I've got the revs. I don't think he's gonna catch me. Come on! Come on! Okay, Nicholas, you definitely benefited from the 850 newton meters of torque you've got in that car. You pulled away from me, but I've got more revs to play with so I can hold a lower gear for longer. And I was reeling you in, reeling you in, reeling you in, but I'm not entirely sure whether I quite had enough room to come past you before the line. 
what do you think? That's exactly it, isn't it? All the torque in the world to play with here. Like you said, you've got more revs. I had to shift up just at the line or risk bouncing it off the limiter. So I have no idea if I was ahead by enough or if that little tiny gear change at the end meant I lost. I have no idea. Let's find out. Let's just do a slow action replay. I've no idea either. <laughs> Finally then, we're going to do a brake test for 100 miles an hour. When we reach the cones, full emergency stop. Car that stops in the shortest distance wins. If you'd rather watch another drag race, click on the pop-out banner up there or find the link in the description below. If not, stay here for the brake test. Here it comes, 100 miles an hour. Um, that can't be right. I've got to admit that I, I think I did a really bad job at hitting the brake pedal there. I mean, it should be easy, but I, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm happy to say that you won that, Nick. I'm happy to say that because it's my fault for cocking up. But I think I'd like to just show how this car can really perform. So do you know what? Let's put a cone or a marker down for where I actually stopped and see if I can actually beat it the next time. Bear with me. Well, Matt, I think I actually got a little bit nervous and jumped on the brake a little bit too soon. Ooh. Yeah. So, in the interest of doing the cars, you know, a solid and letting them perform as they should, I completely agree. Let's go again. In other words, you cheated. Thanks, Nick. But I, I still, yeah, anyway, let's, let me just put a marker out. I'm going to use the specialist timing gear. I know what some people are saying. Don't write it, don't write it down. Oh, Matt always wants to have another game. If he doesn't win, that's just a... Yeah, Matt is that, Matt is that. It's some kind of weird insecurity that I have. I had a lot of therapy about it, but it doesn't seem to shake it from... Here we go again. So I definitely did a better job that time your car performed worse and I definitely stopped in a shorter distance because if you look my specialist timing gear is pretty much laid down where the rear of your car is can you see yes I can I think what happened there is you did a good job I did a, a more accurate job but this car has been doing a lot of braking today and it's a big old heavy car and the fact that it is only this far further down the road compared with your supercar is not bad is it come on how did your brake pedal feel after that stop? Was it getting a bit long? A bit long, yeah, a bit spongy. So if you are getting an Audi RS6 performance and you might want to drive it on track or down some canyon roads or something, maybe opt for the carbon ceramics like this R8 has because it can brake and brake and brake and brake again without braking, if that makes any sense.